So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our roundtable discussion. This is about the space technology, how Hungarian um, space industry enterprises can relate to these opportunities. And uh, this is an event of the Hungarian Economic Association. And three sections uh, cooperated in making this happen. Section of industry and entrepreneurship, section of development economics, and the section of startups. So this is how uh, we uh, uh, organize the event. We will have the following agenda. So um, we have a, a round table here in the WebEx platform, and we will participate in the discussion. And there's a live stream going to the YouTube channel with non-Hungarian speaking audience. This is why we have English as a language for the event. So first, um, uh, I will ask um, Laszlo Trautmann, uh, the um, chairman of the um, section of development economics, to uh, say a few words. Uh, then Mr. Peter, the chairman of Hans Space, this is the Hungarian space industry cluster, will have an um, opening speech and presentation. And then we open the round table with Istvan Arnold, Managing Director of Space Apps, Bertan Eged, Managing Director of SEGEX Communications, and Károly Schlosser, Professor at Goldsmiths, University of London, and founder of Aquanautica Center for Exploration. Uh, they will be our round table partners together with Mr. Peter Hargitay. So, uh, and then uh, they will all introduce themselves briefly, comment on the uh, keynote speech, and then we will have uh, some questions. Um, so later on, uh, when somebody has questions here in this forum, please uh, write your question in the chat, and when the opportunity comes, we can uh, answer those questions, time allowing, okay? By the way, my name is Miklos Kozma. I'm the chairman of the uh, section of industry and entrepreneurship. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. And let me pass the word to Laszlo, please. Dear colleagues, uh, it's a great honor uh, uh, from me uh, to honor such a, a great distinguished guest this uh, uh, event. Uh, at our section of development economics, we are uh, searching for the frontier of uh, industrial policy, and we are deeply convinced that the space industry recently is the is the, at the at the cut uh, technology, the cutting edge of te uh, technology, and the recent uh, uh, develop technological development, and that's the reason why uh, we started uh, uh, the cooperation with other sections uh, to section events. And uh, we are deeply convinced as well that uh, Hungary has to take part in the global partnership, in the global um, um, shape of the new kind of infrastructure. And we hope that uh, this event will contribute uh, to this uh, new way of thinking of the new, new stage of the globalization. Thank you very much. And I am looking for a, a, I, we are looking for a new uh, um, events and a new. Uh, possibilities uh, to find the new models. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Laszlo. And um, now let me pass the word to Mr. Peter Hargitay. Could you please briefly introduce yourself and, and start with the presentation, please? Uh, Peter, can you hear us? I, I see you are muted. 
not anymore. No. Ah, okay. Um, I just check if there is no interference. Can you hear me clearly? Yeah, it's okay. It's fine. Good. So, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, dear audience, uh, dear colleagues. I am very much happy and very glad to, to participate in this meeting. As far as it is my class audience, the viewers. Uh, my name is Peter Hagitai. I am the chairman of the Hungarian Space Cluster, which is an uh, industrial body of uh, industries uh, related to space. And uh, most probably that's why I was asked to make an introductory presentation about space industry in Hungary. Uh, in the morning when I prepared the presentation, I was thinking about that who could be here. My expectation is it was to do something who are interested in space, but it is not true that everybody is involved in space. Okay, I see Ishran are not related to that very much, but I expect to the audience uh, which, which is interested and want to have knowledge about it. So I did some introduction about that, and also somehow making the stress or emphasizing which is related to economy, which is not my field of knowledge, but somehow uh, I try to have an emphasize to spark. Uh, now I start the presentation. It is always very interesting. In, uh, very tricky how to carry it. Okay, I just ask if, if it can be seen. Hello. Um, yes, we see it. But? But we see a, a small screen and a large screen at the same time. I think it's very good. Well, anyway, I think we can see the uh, important content anyway. So please go ahead. I will, I will try to amend it. I just to it. I try to use the full screen mode because we see yes, the that I see full screen. Ah, okay. Most nem nagyon rossz a Is it better now? Yeah, it's okay. I heard someone else talking, so maybe it's good if everyone else will just mute. Okay, is it okay now? Oh, now it's perfect. Okay, please go ahead. Yeah, because I have to monitor and it is not always clear with uh, bad acts that it is so. No. Okay, so just repeating myself, uh, I will try to give some introduction about space technology and uh, and the space related in, in, in Hungary. Uh, the content of the talk will be about space industry. What is it about? So what is it space industry and what is not space industry? Some short history about the Hungarian inclusion in space industry. Some characteristic of the space activities which is important for us. 
And uh, some examples of the Hungarian participation in space industry, and of course, because I'm the chairman of the Hungarian Space Cluster, I have to say something about the Space Cluster, but I will not make too much marketing. Um, about the space industry, when we speak about that, it is, it is a special industry because it is related to a certain uh, area of the, of, of the world. I, I would say everything which is outside of the Earth. And um, also it is important to know about that and uh, that it is very much related to science and education, but it is not equal to science and education in space. When we are, it is it is good to mention it because when we speak with, with laymen who speak about space, it's always mixed. Space in, uh, according to my very simple um, uh, formulation, what is space industry? Space industry should be something which is working for the space. So when we speak about uh, a space mission, then the science is uh, scientific part of the what the space mission fulfills, for example, finding a new new planet or a, a new uh, uh, solar system, that is a scientific part. But the industrial part is that, for example, if there is a, a, a platform which should be delivered to that uh, situation, I mean, the, the rocket, it should work. It should go out and deliver all the tasks which are related to the science. So that it is very important to, to, to mention. Uh, because of, of this situation, it is uh, including the research and development actors, of course, because it is on one of the main uses of them, uh, but also it is a part of industry which, which is very much specialized. Uh, there is also another uh, distinction which uh, uh, sometimes it is going into the Discussion, especially in the English, English language literature, that it is upstream and downstream in the space industry. It is to put it very simple, the upstream means something is going up, for example, a rocket, and the downstream, which is going down, for example, the Earth's observation information, for example, the uh, space images which is collected from a certain mission. Um, so, this, this is somehow the base, uh, base of the the knowledge of space industry. Now about the actors in the in space industry in the world in general, we can put them into two main buckets. One is the public, public participants, and the other is the private participants. I just put there some examples which can be known from the news or any other talk, any other any other sources. Uh, uh, for us, for Hungarians, maybe the most important is the ESA, the European Space Agency. Yet I will speak some words about it. Where we are member, it is connected, it is including the European Space uh, uh, European Union members. Not all of them, but most of them are members of the European Space Agency. Um, now, <laughs> let's go to the some of the history of the Hungarian civil space. Uh, the first was uh, Zoltan Boy, who was uh, making, uh, together with a small group of Hungarian physicists and engineers, uh, uh, a lunar surface measurement. It was in 1946, uh, which, which we can consider the start of the Hungarian space activity. Then later on, either participating in the space uh, cooperation of the so-called uh, uh, socialist countries for the Intercosmos program. We had the Hungarian uh, uh, astronaut, uh, Mr. Farkas Bertolan, who was a very famous person, a famous person about that. Uh, he's still active and supporting very much uh, to prepare the next generation of Hungarian astronauts who can be working in this space. Uh, also, we had different participation in, in, in missions of the, uh, toward the end of the last uh, century, uh, that a lot of Hungarian instruments were included in the, uh, in the different missions. And one 
which is quite common that we can do all of you. Uh, the, the first Hungarian uh, satellite in Mossad 1 was delivered in 2012. Uh, about the uh, uh, cooperation and, and how we entered into the space uh, relation, uh, after when the Intercosmos was uh, so called. Uh, this sort or, or not, not operating anymore, Hungary immediately started to make new connections to that to follow up uh, space activities. And uh, we were one of the first countries from the uh, socialist group who started to cooperate with ESA, the European Space Agency, in 2003. And already in that year, we made the agreement, the so called uh, uh, entry level. Uh, uh, entering the starting group of ESA, uh, where, where the new members can uh, work together. This is the so called PAX. It was signed in 2003, and we were quite active on that. Uh, unfortunately, there were a lot of other reasons and, and not really related to the space that uh, for the planning of the PAX, which was originally three years. Or maximum six years, it took almost uh, uh, 30, 12 years when we really joined the ESA. So, but, but uh, it happened. And uh, uh, also, and that, gave, that may be an advantage of the later joining of ESA, that nowadays the ESA, learning from previous experiences, has a special entry program for the new full members. That's the full member, which is about a 60 year period. We are quite by the end of that period, which means that supporting still the new members' activity in the public space in the ESA. Um, some information, which is mainly, I, I put it very strongly because it is an economic society which we are, which I know, dealing with the introduction, that what kind of uh, in economic term, what kind of activity space uh, we can consider. One is this is an industry which needs a long term investment. So, when we are speaking about uh, working in space as an industrial partner, it minimum needs at least 10 years of involvement for planning to participate. So, it is not a uh, fast moving consumer good industry. It is something which requires a very lot of preparation and development and all the activities. Uh, it is quite easy to understand that some of the missions are taking more than 10 years or 20 years in, in reality. So if someone is working in that mission, it means the involvement for, 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 a, for a long time. The second, which is a specialty of this industry, is the so called international cooperation. So I would say, just taking out the, the proverb that no man is an island in, in, in space. So even the most competitive uh, companies or most competitive countries should work together to get success in the space. It is, there are two reasons, and, and we, we can say that the resources are not enough even for the biggest participants like the United States or, or now we can speak about China to do everything alone or in other times in Russia. So it is even on, on, a, on, a, on, on the most strong participants, it needs cooperation, especially importantly for, for small participants, especially quite small participants like Hungary. Um, now, the, the third one, that this is an industry which is very much affected by the state. The relevant state activity required for that. I can say that in Hungary it is existing, so we have a very active state, state uh, program on that. I would be happy to say that we already have a space strategy, but it is still not yet ready, but quite right on the uh, final stage. But, but the Hungarian state is very active on that too. too. To, to support and, and giving uh, impetus to the space uh, activities. Uh, the fourth uh, characteristic which I should mention that uh, 
it is important, especially for the newcomers, that uh, uh, it is not very advisable and historically it, it, it doesn't look like so if it happens that one company can just work exclusively for the space activities. It is a very, it would be a very risky uh, activity for an industrial body just to work for the space. We when we speak about the biggest participants like Airbus or Thales or, or Mohave and other companies, they have many other different activities which can be somewhat related to the space, but not really space related. And and and, and only one activity is their space activity. Of course, it's a very important activity, but it is good to say good to mention that it is it can be a single activity of, of one company. It is I, I have seen many companies with bit like that and they are not existing anymore. I even know these companies in Italy, in Spain, which just worked on space and they are not active anymore. And the last one, that it is um, a very large, uh, as I mentioned already, the cooperation, but it also requires a kind of networking between the uh, public and private bodies, but more like uh, networking between the people who are, or the, or the, or the uh, specialists who are working on a different special part of the space. So it means that, that uh, when there is a, a, a special knowledge needed for a space work, for example, knowledge about coating, knowledge about uh, electric circuits and so on, then these uh, professional companies are cooperating on, on on the level of their professional staff as well. Uh, I'm going on for the next one. Yeah, I just brought together some examples, which is uh, from Hungarian part, which are included in the uh, processes. And uh, uh, I just mentioned then that what, what are under preparation and what are under work. Uh, I may, I would rather say that most important is the left and down side that uh, there are the colored uh, particles are part of the Sentinel-2 mission, which is the European Space Agency uh, Copernicus program mission, which is for the Earth observation part and, and the flagship of uh, European Space Agency. Some other, yeah, some, some about the yeah, I, I should mention, especially because it is mainly my knowledge of Earth observation that Hungary is quite active on that and quite at the, well, a good level of working there. Uh, also, some recent example, which is from the last year, the, the two two missions which we did independently and which were, I would say, independently, which was uh, Hungarian, fully uh, uh, Hungarian resource. One is this smoke, which is uh, about uh, measuring the the, the so-called uh, uh, mm, I don't want to say something which is not proper, but uh, the so-called frequencies also the the, the different uh, radio frequency smoke in the in the area of uh, of the Earth, and it is measuring from the uh, space. And there is on, on the right hand side there is a uh, there is a on, on the other which was used by the smoke. And also there is a, another one, the the APL one, which is uh, which is quite an industrial experiment. This is a Hungarian company which is tested as Coating, what how it is working in the space. This is a special testing. I see some. I have some slides about the Hungarian space cluster. Just the data about that we were established in 2007. We were accredited as, as, a, as a cluster in 2014. We have 39 members now. But it's important, as I mentioned, that uh, uh, we should also work with, with the other cooperation. We are members of the SME for space which is a European small and medium industry enterprises who is working in the space. Uh, we were, I think, we were the fourth or fifth member who were joining them. And uh, but uh, the purpose of the, you know, 
I straight forward, I purpose to include most participants of the Hungarian space industry in the Hungarian space cluster. Uh, yeah, we are working in the cluster committee. I, I did not uh, run into the details about that, but it is according to a different uh, uh, professional part how the members are working uh, in. Uh, some of the for documenting our activities. So we have each year an annual general meeting on the left and upper side the, the um, Dr. Orsoya Ferenc was participating in, uh, in the uh, uh, Minister uh, Secretary of, of the Space in the Hungarian uh, uh, Foreign Relations Ministry. Also, there was uh, because the Hungarian space cluster is based in, in Miskolc. Also, there is the uh, mayor of uh, Miskolc uh, left to uh, Professor Torsoya. Also, we were participating in different uh, exhibitions and, 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 and uh, symposiums. Uh, actually, um, that, is, that would be too much for, for timing, but it is just showing that how we are organizing the different knowledge about the companies which are participating. Um, one which I can mention here that there are two kinds of members we have in the class, and one of them which are so called prime members, which means that we are really having contracts with the space, it means that they are direct contract have producing something like space. And also we have the uh, so-called secondary members in the clusters. It doesn't mean that they are not they are very important, but they are not making the contract themselves. They are either participating as a partner or participating as a subcontractor for them. It is important for them because we have a lot of uh, many, many more of them are, are so-called secondary members because they have their own industry working in the automotive industry or some kind of uh, of uh, production company and only certain part related to the space and then it is uh, it would be very non-economic and quite clumsy and problematic to make direct contract on basically so they are rather making a group with a private contractor who is making the main contract um, yeah it is about our strategy it is a uh, uh, maybe it should have been put in the first slide of, of the project class and finally change it uh, one is that um, we are we do participate to formulate the national space strategy, and uh, we uh, would like to apply it in the space industry. The national space strategy, which is a scheme of study, as I mentioned, but it's right in the final stage, it includes not about only the space industry, but also the research and the education. So it is quite well about space industry, of course. Uh, the second part is to more and and best participation in ESA programs. I should say it is not an easy task at the so-called incentive scheme, as I put in one of the previous slides, which is the so-called entry of the, of the ESA is running out in 2021. And then we have to run on the main road of the ESA programs and we should compete with others to get the project so it's a good, good thing to to learn together how to participate in either program. The third, the third one is the content development of the Hungarian space industry. It is quite easy to understand. Uh, the fourth one is that we are participating, as I mentioned, in different exhibitions where we uh, collect information for the members and also represent the members. So we are bringing out the different uh, showcases and, and uh, at, at least some slideshows about the members who will be able to of course that it is uh, not everything, everything can be brought up for a presentation or for a, for a conference. Um, also, we participate in international cooperation with space industry. It is mainly focused on the uh, European level, but just uh, it is not just that because also there are members who are working in, in uh, other uh, area of interest. So that they, United States, so there are a member which is working together with NASA. Also, there is another member who is working with DAXA with the Japanese uh, Space Agency. So, so that's why it is international cooperation. And uh, of course, we are still very much interested in 
to help the members of that space have had to work together in the incentive scheme, which is so called supporting fund. But as I mentioned, it's coming out by the end of the year. Maybe it will be prolonged still one year or somewhat longer because uh, to get it more and uh, more, more successful. So that's what I prepared. I think don't have any more slides. That's what I prepared as a presentation. I look at my look, okay, it was a little bit longer than the promised 20 minutes, but I hope it was interesting and very informative for you. So then I will give back to the floor to the audience for questions and I'm quite happy to answer for them. All right, thank you very much, Peter, for this uh, uh, wonderful presentation. I'm sure we all have a lot of questions, but before we open the floor for the questions, let me ask our other three uh, speakers, participants of the roundtable, to introduce themselves and their organization, what they do, what is their focus, and um, then we will start the uh, interactive part. So, uh, Istvan Arnold, uh, would you please uh, be the next? Uh... Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. I'm Istvan Arnold. I'm the CEO of Space Labs. This is a small startup uh, which focuses on Earth observational data, uh, mobile applications, and we started to deal with uh, AI a little bit and uh, we also build our own hardware devices. So our approach is to, to uh, go to the downstream application side. As, as Peter mentioned, there are multiple uh, ways to act in space. And uh, uh, of course, it is very sexy to build uh, satellites and, and space hardware and launch it into space. But actually, uh, right now, there is a ton of satellites orbiting about about, uh, about us and uh, very few company are using uh, this data. So there is a huge uh, data uh, heap or stack, uh, and we can we can use this data for various uh, type of business. And this is what we are doing. Perfect. Okay. Thank you very much, Istvan. Uh, next one is. Um... Uh, Eget Bertalan, please, could you please introduce yourself and what you do? Good evening, thank you very much. My name is Bertalan Eget. I am representing here Sagox Communications. Actually, this is uh, the company established nearly 30 years ago, uh, one of my early and uh, first company. And uh, currently we are expanding our activity and uh, try to join to this uh, new space revolution and try to look after business in the space industry. We're mainly focusing on telecommunication type of application, mainly upstream. So we try to add some technology, not exactly launching some satellite or some space hardware. We would like to start with the ground segment, which is also part of the uh, overall space infrastructure. You know, the control stations and and uh, all the telecommunication infrastructure through the through the satellites. Uh, on top of that, uh, I have a couple of other activities like uh, uh, startup activities or startup companies related to the space. We already access some uh, ESA fundings and uh, some projects which are already supported by the European space industry. And also we are looking forward uh, all these uh, Hungarian sources, uh, as it was already mentioned, we recently joined to the European Space Agency. We already uh, started to invest very heavily in space industry at uh, government level. So this is also our focus to look after this resources and develop some products where we can do business in the space industry. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bertola. And last but not least, uh, Karo Schlosser, could you please also introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Karo Schlosser, and I, I, it, so it sounds like I'm the old one out here being a psychologist. Um, there are two major streams that I'm currently Focusing on one is my research as a behavioral scientist developing training, a behavioral training for uh, astronauts and the European Space Agency more broadly to see how they can 
adaptively, resiliently, and productively cope with uh, uh, sort of challenging context, but still perform up to their standards. The other uh, stream of it is um, organizing. Well, the whole idea came came out of um, organizing cave diving, long cave diving missions where people would actually camp inside a flooded cave system and they would undertake um, um, long dive hikes, um, which potentially can last up to days as well, um, establishing further uh, campsites along uh, the network of cave systems. The reason for running these um, should call it experiments and cave dive hikes to to study human behavior. The existing mission analogs that uh, people often use to study human behavior and to test those, uh, test some of the equipment which will be launched to space. I wonder if, as a psychologist, I can't really see it as um, something which produces valid and reliable data when it comes to to human behavior and performance. So uh, um, we were looking for an alternative which can best represent uh, the struggles that astronauts face in space. And that seems to be cave diving. More uh, about that later. OK. So let me just um, uh, start the discussion. And then all the four of you are free to, to comment or add or elaborate. So, um, uh, Mr. Hargita showed us an overview and he also highlighted like four segments where Hungarian companies and Hungarian uh, actors are related to space industry. Uh, how is this landscape changing? So, are there uh, new opportunities? I, I heard that maybe what Istvan told in the beginning is something which is more up and coming. Uh, are there some more traditionals uh, that are the stable uh, backbone of Hungarian involvement in the space industry? So could some of you just, uh, just draw us uh, uh, the draft of, of what is uh, the major focus and what could be the new interesting development opportunities for Hungarian companies. Uh, and I start with uh, just saying that for Hungary, I say I think that now we have the entry position for the space industry, uh, as I mentioned in the ESA, uh, but also and maybe each one, I think each one definitely knows about it. And I definitely was not speaking in the presentation about that there is in the space industry, there is a revolution now, which is called new space industry, which is something which would like to read the so called old space industry as it is and new possibilities. So when we speak about new space industry, just for the large audience, you should immediately think about people like Elon Musk, for example. Mm -hmm. If you speak about old space industry or traditional space industry, then you should think about the traditional bodies like the NASA, for example. So, so there is a large turbulence now in the space industry, and behind the position just entering this uh, very rapidly changing situation and trying to find some ground under the companies what is trying to speak about or that one speak about so how to relate it to these activities of course it is not an easy task because i just mentioned that even to get into the traditional space industry it is a very very hard task as i listed up what are, what are the options there and that's why it may be have maybe a possibility to get into the new space industry which is uh, i would say that of course, like very much uh, the idea of uh, Mr. Elon Musk, but we cannot say that it is very much scientifically grounded options which he is speaking about. He is just having ideas and then making everything to fulfill the idea. So it is he has a very so it is a very different approach in that respect. 
Yes, actually, this is this is absolutely true. Uh, if I can add that, uh, new space is more about uh, uh, business. So uh, actually, traditional space was not really an industry. It was uh, uh, an investment from the government. There was uh, governmental needs. Actually, we didn't build uh, the first space rockets to uh, ferry human into space, but to ferry age uh, bombs or atomic bombs to the neighboring countries. Uh, and, and this is why uh, space will also always remain this uh, partially uh, a national, national uh, focus or something like this. But, uh, but this is only possible uh, by uh, funded by the, by the uh, government. And new space is uh, also called venture space or, uh, uh, or business space where the uh, the technology advanced so much that right now it is possible to build a business case around space hardware or or services provided from space. Uh, I always like to uh, give an example like Planet Labs because of course everyone knows uh, SpaceX. It is very fancy to see their landing rackets, and this is uh, of course uh, a huge. Uh, 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 result or, or advancement. But there is a Planet Labs who imagined a new type of Earth observational service. They are creating satellites, just like all players, but these satellites are 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter by 30 centimeter. So it's, it's like a, a shoe box. And they are putting in orbit uh, around uh, 150 shoe boxes, which is still just around 200 kilograms or, or maximum 300, which is not much. We have uh, huge satellites in geostationary orbit, which, which measure, which weight around two, three tons. Uh, so these, these satellites are very little, but their advantage is that they are everywhere around the Earth. This means that uh, they can uh, give us uh, a new way of Earth observation. So, so they uh, make a photo every day of every centimeter of the globe. So they recreate a whole uh, Earth image day by day since, um, if I remember, well, 2016 or something like that. Uh, and, and this is new space. The whole company costs or, or uh, receive an investment around $200 million, which is not much, to be honest. And they, they, can, they can create a brand new type of service. And they are, they are taking uh, uh, business uh, from the other players at this, at this field. So, so I think new spaces, uh, when we start to use uh, business cases and, and uh, CubeSats, to be honest. So this is, this is a, a good point for Hungary because this stuff, these, uh, these little devices, doesn't cost so much. This is why we have companies like C3S. I, I think you know the, the Mossad team. Uh, everyone knows the first Hungary and CubeSat, the, the, uh, the one unit CubeSat. Uh, this team decided to uh, create a company and they are now C3S and they are uh, building these small uh, CubeSat platforms, uh, which, which can host any kind of research, any kind of payload. So uh, let's say someone has an idea that I would like to create a service from Earth for this a type of uh, customers, all I need is, uh, is a, a little boat which brings my, my device uh, into, into lower orbit. So, so we, can, we can actually uh, go and ask C3S to, to host our payload and, and put it into a, a Falcon 9 rocket and, and, and that's it. Let's go. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Before I ask the next question, Bertalon, Karol, do you want to elaborate? Yes, thank you very much. All of the words we heard about uh, this topic from Peter and Istvan, I, I, I very much agree. So I, I, I think this is my opinion also that we can think about the original space industry as the uh, you know the playground of the major government bodies. 
like if I think about the Hungarian uh, original space activities in the 60s, 70s, 80s, you know, before the 90s, um, you know, we also had a kind of scientific research where we used the data and also we had some industrial part, but this industrial part also led by the, you know, the KFKI, the Central Physics Research Institute of the Academy of the Science. So if you want to build something, some subcomponents of the of the satellites, like with the Roscosmos, we had, you know, international cooperation also at that time, you you had to be a scientist in the in this uh, academic uh, institute or elsewhere in the downstream, if you would like to access the space data, so you had to participate in a, in a big academic institute. So uh, we, we can say this is a traditional business and due to the very fast uh, technology changing, I think this open, this very fast technology um, development opened the gate that somebody without these government bodies can start some business in space. You wish to also mention the SpaceX. Uh, one of their main business is the launching satellites, so you know, the uh, rockets. But also there are approximately 10, 12 other companies who can put your satellites into orbit. So currently this is also a very fastly uh, changing changing market. So, so I, I think somehow this is the... Uh, current situation in the new space that without this uh, big big uh, government organization you can do something something in space on the other hand i think uh, we are uh, also an industrial company so one of our goal is generating business and generating profit and you know some more participating that one so currently I see that we have also um, some opportunity in the traditional space not only building a new satellite and absolutely new technology like c3s this the other hungarian company which was mentioned here who decided to build satellites but also you know somehow joining to the supply chain so like if we are talking about a very large space mission like the the 60 percent of the budget of the european space industry will be spent in the moon observation and you know the moon station which will orbiting around the around the moon very similar like the international space station orbiting on the earth there will be another space station orbiting around the moon so there are a couple of big companies called large scale integrators like one of them is airbus who can build such a hardware but building such a hardware, there are a number of tier one, tier two, and you know a lot of suppliers. So there is a supply chain. So as a small or smaller or even bigger Hungarian companies, I think this is very important for us to be able to join to this supply chain and you know ship something, even a very small component. Like uh, we are currently, you know, in the negotiation with one of them to designing a small antenna, which will be a very negligible, very small components in the overall picture. But we already start to build in ourselves into the into the supply chain. So I think uh, not only the new space uh, contains business for us, but also this traditional space industry also give us a lot of opportunities. And on the other hand, I, I think this is very clear. Uh, also, I also was uh, mentioned by by by, by Peter uh, that Hungarian government is really supporting this activity and try to help all the industry pay players and also the academic players to join even the existing or traditional space industry or the or the new space to be able to part of this of this overall process and of course. For an industrial company, this is our goal to to generate business and and and, and somehow be, be able to to join to this overall overall uh, chain. Thank you, Caro. Do you want to say anything at this stage, or maybe just a very few words? Uh, new space on my end as a psychologist and the few people I'm uh, in touch with to do any sort of space medicine research and development and you know, entrepreneurial activity we, we don't we not necessarily experience this boom yet um 
most of the work we do is research and development and uh, sort of falls under the category of providing a service to one of these space related uh, uh, either uh, private companies or agencies but there's definitely a growing interest in what we do and that's sort of exciting for us uh, thank you very much. Now, many of you mentioned uh, the involvement of government in Hungary and in other countries as well. Uh, and also, as I gather, it's not just about the traditional space field, but also in the new space field, although, although not as much. So now if my question is focused on the new space, which you know attracts a lot of attention, because we are economists, we want to see business, and, and that's a, a very developing field. Could some of you comment on how and why government, especially Hungarian government, should uh, support this new space field uh, compared to a lot of other industries that also could use government support? So what are the fundamental reasons uh, that you see as important here? Maybe I can I can say one thing. Uh, I uh, organized uh, an event uh, two and a half years ago. Uh, I uh, I'm uh, working uh, partially uh, as a as an activist for the Hungarian uh, Astronautical Association and also for the Space Generation Advisory Council, which is a UN uh, uh, advisory board, a youth advisory board. And we we organized an event called uh, uh, Space Education uh, in early 2018. And it was it was interesting because there was some uh, some uh, uh, it, it was it was not uh, uh, organized by any of the official bodies it was organized by just the yaws who really wanted to to learn about space and uh, i sent some requests to join uh, to um, uh, companies like the uh, four large uh, space company in hungary and three of them uh, appeared at this at this little event. Uh, we also invited uh, uh, people from uh, from the uh, government. There was no official governmental presence, but un unofficially, uh, a few guys uh, appeared there. And we also invited an investor. Uh, uh, actually, this. Uh, this man is not alive uh, since then, but but uh, he was very interested uh, to to deal with space technology and and to start space related investments, uh, and and also uh, a reporter from uh, Forbes appeared, but just just as a as a person. What what interesting was is that at the end of this uh, uh, section, it turned out that these companies could could use. Uh, funding from the government, they could use uh, uh, any other kind of helps, but the most important for them would be uh, trained young uh, workforce. So also in my startup, one of my biggest problem is that uh, I cannot employ uh, young talented people who are educated in the fields what, what we really need to use. Uh, we are doing Earth observational data analytics, which is a bit niche. So not not many people uh, are are doing this. Is usually ELTE uh, um, people uh, are researching uh, Earth observation data at the Ötök Laurent University of Science, uh, and uh, there there is just a few person there. So uh, uh, I had to employ. Uh, mathematicians who who have no fear to start to write code and and to fail and and try again uh, so so this was this was the the common idea that uh, that uh, trained workforce is is so a space related training would be uh, a big help also i would say that uh, that uh, of course funding is always good uh, I, I cannot say that, uh, but but we also have to see that uh, 
uh, a lot of uh, good companies uh, in the 70s, 80s came out of people working at older, larger companies who, who, who learned how to do technology and they, they listened what kind of issues are there with the technology. For example, we, we are right now at, at WebEx. Did you know that the founder of Zoom was a WebEx employee who, who uh, uh, always asked the management why we don't uh, uh, put all these features what our customers are requesting for. And they said always, sorry, it's not possible to do more upgrades. So he founded Zoom and this is why there is the, but, but also like, uh, like the employees from Intel, they were working at uh, Honeywell earlier, if I'm right. And, and they said, okay, that's enough. We are 40. Let's fund our own company. And they funded Intel. And, and also what I mentioned, Planet Labs is uh, a company uh, where the three founder was actually NASA employees. So they were working at NASA and they were working on their own company by uh, during their NASA NASA employment as they were researcher there so they were researching it's it's okay uh, but also also SpaceX SpaceX is there and they are employing the uh, 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 researchers from NASA who 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 uh, left NASA they get a ton of help from NASA and also uh, also uh, I I think it was maybe Lockheed Martin who won a contract in the 90s uh, from NASA to, to build uh, a, a rocket, which, which can, uh, this, uh, this one stage rocket, which, which uh, use only one stage to get into orbit. They, they get the, fu uh, they was funded by NASA. They, they made the engineering work, uh, but then the project was shut down. So when SpaceX started, uh, all these engineers were looking like their their dreams since more than fifteen years can can be can be realized again. So this is this is how these startups can get good workforce because they were already trained by large uh, government uh, bodies. Like if, if if I can say that Lockheed Martin and and doing are government entities because they are funded by government money. Mainly, of of course, you can uh, disagree with me, but I, I think that this is this is important to get valuable uh, workforce. Yeah, I think this this is an important question. So why you mentioned this uh, couple of examples? This was in coming in my mind that one of my engineers already graduated as a mechatronics engineer, and. You know, when I was at university stage, I was graduated as an electronic engineer. We had no idea what is mechatronics, never had. So this is a very new discipline. And you know, the mechatronics engineering is already an uh, intersection of the original mechanical engineering and electrical engineering and new automotive industry and, you know, all this. Uh, uh, automotive stuff, uh, you know, came up with this needs that we need a person who has good understanding all of this mecha mechanical and electrical stuff. And I think this is the same with the space engineering. So you have to know that currently nearly all major universities, so Adris, Budapest University of Technology and, you know, the Debrecen University already started the courses or in preparation. I don't know what is the current stage for space engineering. So there will be a graduation, mechatronics, electrical, mechanical, and space engineering. And, you know, space engineering will contains, I think, a lot of different discipline which will serve uh, a future workforce, a future needs. Currently, we have no idea what will be the job of these engineers, you know, uh, 20 years uh, from now, or what, what, what kind of uh, technology uh, will be there. So I, I, I think this is important. And there was coming in my mind that maybe we are talking about economies, but you know, what is the cryptocurrency 20 years ago? Nobody has an idea about that. So this is the same, that we have a new technology, new technologies come. So we have, if we have a workforce or education with interdisciplinary knowledge, this will be more adaptable and this will be, you know, more relevant in, in, the, in the future than a single discipline um, educated engineer. 
And the other things, you turn back to the original question uh, by Miklos that why should government support new, new space uh, industry and, and, and new space business? I think everywhere in the industry, uh, there is a race, there is a competition. <laughs> Everybody have to compete with somebody. So I think this is the fundamental and, you know, the basic moving factor for the overall society and the, and the overall world. But new space is somehow uh, a new start. So there is somehow an equal chance. So we, 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 we might have an equal chance with the Dutch company, but if we try to compete with, I don't know, uh, milk production, <laughs> maybe we have no, 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 the, no the same chance. So, so that's why I think this is, this is important to, to uh, support and invest in this, in this industry at government level. Because this is the new race, this is the new start, this is a new space, as it's called it by name. So we have uh, mostly the same chance. Of course, we have to scale, we have to compare every investment and every results to the size of the country and the size of the population. But uh, a lot of times this is already mentioned that international cooperation is very important. So I already heard a couple of uh, rumors about that, that why the Hungarian government body is located, not the, you know, the uh, ITM, the another ministry, the technology ministry, why it is located in the foreign affairs ministry. So I think in, in space industry, this, this international cooperation is, is, is very, very important. So I, I, I think they are pretty successful to somehow put Hungary on the, on the map and, you know, start to discuss with other major industry uh, experts and and uh, industry countries about the about the cooperation so i think this is why it is important to to invest i i would like to build on that i think you for the two of you Bertrand and Ishwan, i like it is really important in our field we are not fortunate yet to to see a, a, a workforce that can sort of uh, uh, yeah, carry out the activities we are interested at. I, if I strictly consider space psychology or behavioral scientist in space, I probably get to count all the way up to 30 globally. Um, if we look at medicine, physicians, flight surgeons, uh, physiologists, you know, the, the number will add up to uh, I don't know, three to 500 maybe, uh, including all the people who work in research and development. Um, so it's a very new and emerging field, and that's part of the problem we are facing, actually. I think that uh, many people see this as, uh, as research and development, and uh, they, are, they struggle to find this as something which can soon enough turn out to be as a space provided to companies. Uh, to improve productivity, uh, improve mental health, especially in uh, situations like this with the pandemic ongoing, people are increasingly feel isolated and soon after the um, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, soon enough we will experience not only an economic uh, struggle, but also a second pandemic, which will be mental health, uh, mental illness in nature. and. Um, there are um, significant researches out there coming out uh, in Lancet, for example, finding that 20% uh, of people who caught COVID uh, three months later developed mental illness. Um, how are we going to work with that? Um, how are we going to help people? How about, uh, how are we going to offer the sufficient support for people, even if we don't have the capacity? Um, Typically, mental health is one of the most underfunded, uh, um, can I call it industries? I'm not sure what to, how to look at it, but how are we going to support all these people globally? And uh, can we develop uh, digital behavioral apps, for example? And if we can, what are the processes which we should focus on? Because clearly, the ones which are existing now are not filling in the gap, although there's an increased uh, uh, um, uh, investment in the field, uh, in not just uh, when it comes to sustainability in terms of living sustainably, but also how to take care of our mental health. So those are those are um, 
big questions to me. And to be honest, I think um, um, very often what I see, not just in Hungary, but elsewhere in Europe, uh, um, perhaps also in the US, is that people see this as some sort of research, but they don't really know how to how to perceive this as some sort of service which can be provided uh, to people globally. And there's certainly a, a huge industry there which is yet unexplored. Um, there's and potentially with looking at how people cope in extreme environments like the astronauts, like divers, cave diving or uh, pilots and, you know, you can Olympicians, for example, um, you know, you can you can find there a pretty solid state of evidence how you can, um, what you can do and what are the things you need to target in order to improve people, people's living standards and, and, and psychological well-being. And this also manifests in money. Um, one of the largest indicators of um, lost income from companies, a significant amount of uh, lost money, is uh, is arising from um, basically uh, employee absenteeism, people not turning up to their job because they feel stressed, overwhelmed, burned out, fatigued, ill, and so on. You name it. Um, so we really need to look into that, I think, and um, um, it, it is important that uh, I think uh, governments not just only support, uh, uh, you know. Um, trials uh, or tries in space exploration when it comes to uh, Earth observation and those sort of things, but also how, how, how can we use the knowledge appearing in space and downstream it uh, to people and, and, and teach people to, to live a better life. Okay, thank you. So if, if I put the pieces together and correct me if I'm wrong, then the people side of this business, I, I, I gather that all of you mentioned it as a key factor. So we, we cannot say that this is a strength of Hungary in the space industry at the moment, but I, I seem to understand that this is the reason why government supports that if we develop this potential workforce to a strong level, this could be our competitive advantage, to use that word, referring to better than what you mentioned before, that this is a new competition field. And this is how we can have an advantage and be competitive against the Dutch or the others. <laughs> Probably not the Dutch, but all, all, the, all the major uh, countries who have an ambition in space. So do you confirm that, that this is this is how we should take a look at the space industry for Hungarian uh, companies? Uh, the, ver, 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 workforce is, is very important and education and develop the future workforce. But the question is that where this workforce will work, where they will pay their tax, where they will spend their income. So I think, okay, it is important to develop education but it is also important to develop the industry and you know try to offer enough opportunity in the future in in home in in Hungary and and because otherwise okay we have this european uh, community but this is an absolute another picture if we spent a lot of money from from the taxpayer money for educating people and they will live Hungary and they will work in Germany, UK, wherever we think. So I, I think this is important to also develop the industrial organization and not only develop the workforce, which can be your competitive edge or not, this is an education business, and also develop the industry and, and develop the workplaces and, and, and you know, give them a work. Um, more on that, I think if you, I mean, um, how are we going to compete with countries uh, like China, US, and you know all those large countries with uh, significantly more population? Sometimes even education, which seem which are seen to be better than ours, uh, we need to significantly increase our uh, investment capacities into innovative industries. Because I think that's that's the only way we, or one of the main ways we can 
we can keep up with the pace. Yes, yeah, this, this, is, is true. this is true, but actually, I think uh, it, we have to see that uh, that space is like a new playground. Uh, it is like uh, the internet was in 1993, that we don't know exactly how new businesses, how new services will evolve at this uh, at this level, there are some obvious uh, 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 business, business cases, like like you know the the first telecommunication and and uh, and uh, the first uh, uh, TV shows from satellites were there in the 70s. Uh, the first Earth observational services where you was able to purchase uh, Earth observational data from governmental bodies was also in the 70s. The first uh, business Earth observation satellites was there in the 80s. So these are the obvious business cases, but there, for sure there are a lot of uh, new businesses which we don't know what, what they're going to be. But if we don't have enough trained people to think about that, then we will lose this uh, opportunity. And uh, I think I think typically the Hungarian products are are w w what are they like? Uh, I, I think uh, a typical Hungarian product is very high quality. It's over engineered, uh, you know, like BMW, uh, uh, Opel, uh, Mercedes have a lot of uh, lot of subcontractors in Hungary. Uh, also, Siemens have like a ton of subcontractors in Hungary. They do the programming, they, they do the engineering. What they do in Germany, they put the, the parts together. Very nice job. Uh, what they have is the brand. But in space, what we really need is this engineering knowledge to have an operational stuff which, uh, which, which works for 10 years or even even more. Actually, I think the typical Hungarian product is a, a well-engineered, ugly stuff. Uh, because it, it is it is sad, I know, I know, but, but to be honest, in space business, you, you don't care how it looks. No one cares, it has to work. And, uh, you know, uh, branding uh, is, is not important if a staff is not working. And of course, with branding, you can you can solve a replacement. But in space, there is no replacement. If the stuff is not working, and if it's a mission critical spare part, your your mission is over. It costed like three billion euros or dollars, and it's over. And and this is where Hungarian uh, subcontractors and companies have a huge potential. Uh, because, for example, there was the the uh, Rosetta mission. I know a lot of you heard about the Rosetta mission, wherein uh, the European Space Agency launched in 2005 a satellite to the uh, chomyov gerasimenko uh, 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 satellite or body. And, and there was a, fee, a lander, the first uh, comet lander, the FIDA lander. And there was a huge Hungarian uh, 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 cooperation uh, in this in this uh, satellite, the central computing unit, the the, the uh, open computer in the lander was a Hungarian computer. No one knows that the uh, the electric uh, power system was also built in Hungary. No one knows that, and this stuff was working uh, only because in the last two days, uh, the Hungarian engineers at at the. Uh, 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 Kaskai or Wigner Research Center uh, sent a new code uh, to to change the operational modes, so so the 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 the, the device was ready to uh, to land in darkness, and it was still able to perform some measurements even if it has no sunlight to charge the batteries, and it was only possible because one. Hungarian engineer woke up three or four days before the actual actual uh, uh, deployment and and sent uh, the last uh, last commands over I don't know how many million kilometers because I don't know where the rendezvous it was. Um, but but this is this is what the Hungarian uh, device, Hungarian uh, uh, tools and services should be branded for. Uh, operations in every uh, circumstances. So th this is for the traditional uh, 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 space. For the, for the new space, we, we really have to look at this, at this uh, uh, playground 
as a, as a as a brand new area where we all could start uh, a huge uh, huge business because actually it is not 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 just Hungary where it's hard to start such a space related business. It's everywhere in the world. Maybe maybe not in China because they have really huge amount of governmental money in in, in startups in in this uh, in this uh, field. Uh, but uh, but uh, also it is hard for everyone, and they are fighting for good engineers. It's uh, uh, if if in Hungary there is uh, uh, a company which which falls down, all these guys are standing up and going to to the European Space Agency to Netherlands actually, and and starting new jobs, and they are welcomed, and they they get uh, huge salaries. So so. Of course, a lot of uh, engineers uh, uh, love to work in Hungary, but to be honest, it is not obvious uh, that if you can get like ten times more uh, as as a monthly salary, uh, you would uh, you would remain with your basic company. But also, it is it is a, another question: uh, if if there is like three, four, five, ten Hungarian engineers who goes to Denmark, who goes to uh, uh, Finland or wherever, uh, Western Europe or into the US and start a company, and they have back offices in Hungary, but they are also applying for for uh, uh, Belgian or or, or uh, Luxembourgian funds. Is that is that a loss for Hungary? Mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure. This is the European concept, you know, and, and that's why, you know, as Carol mentioned, you know, Hungary will not be able to compete China. You know, this, this is America, Europe and Asia. This is an another level, another another dimension. So we, we have to find our, our place in, in this overall picture in, inside Europe and support join. And Istvan, thank you for your marketing for the Rosetta mission. <laughs> It, it was, you know, Mossad a little bit over marketed this, you know, very traditional Hungarian achievement like the Rosetta Lander, you know, in my department in the BME, it was made the power supply of this, of this unit, right? So this, this is important milestone. So Bertalan, and now that you're talking, uh, uh, let me ask a question related to traditional space uh, now, and then we will go back to new space because I think many people are interested. Uh, but regarding the traditional one, you mentioned that we need to uh, integrate Hungarian companies into the supply chain, right? And become suppliers at different tiers. Uh, is it similar to other traditional industries that we are suppliers of German or US companies? Or, or is it more developing and maybe can be a Hungarian company can be supplied to Chinese or other Asian uh, clients. So, how how international is this field? Right. But Michael, I, I, I think so if, if it is possible that we analyze it and the situation with the space industry is different. What we speak about with other industries in two respects. One is that the for a long time and probably for a very long time in Hungary. Space industry will be represented only by small and maximum medium enterprises. Even in the Hungarian terms, it means companies with up to 10, 12, 20 people, absolutely below 100. So that's what we should think about. This is one very long situation, which is quite related to the space. And the other uh, factor which we should consider and that is one of the most important differences uh, connected to this one, but also it is a situation that the space industry at the moment, especially US per micro, in the traditional sense, it is not a mass industry. So we cannot speak similarities to the automotive industry, but there is a chance that we have an automotive supplier in Hungary who can produce all the clutches for the Audi, for example. Because in the space industry, we don't need uh, 200,000 clutches per year. We need only one very difficult, going back to each one, a very complex uh, product, which is only used possibly once in its lifetime. 
and it requires a special uh, production chain where the, with these production chains are generally including several companies, not only Hungarian companies, many other companies who can produce this very complex product, which is up to the a, a space mission, for example. And this is where the Hungarian companies should somehow put their or find their position. It is not an easy task. It is related back to the point which you discussed about education and payment and all those things. Uh, I think it is a very difficult situation for Hungary because, of course, when, when you need a very specialized knowledge for a very special product, but you don't want, you don't, you are not in the situation to pay the same salary as it is paid, for example, in another company in another part of the world, then it is a difficulty. That's why the state can, came into the, can come into the picture because then the state can find out certain directions where it is possible to direct the market to help this process. Because in Hungary, and that, uh, that is important, the state can support certain parts of the state industry on which these companies can build up their position to, part, to be part of the supply chain. And then they can be part of the supply chain for, for a certain product or a certain service in the product, then there is a chance when the company will appear in their position in that production chain, then they can raise up their technical awareness and technical knowledge. They can attract people from the uh, education who can be part of that. And also they can pay for the people because in the space industry, it is not true that they are not paying. Uh, they are paying well, but don't want to pay very much for the newcomer. You have to find only a full 100% reliable companies who are able to work. So I can mention that when some of the space uh, cluster members, you mentioned CCS, uh, or I can mention Antwerpies, that they are working for the Sentinel program or working for, for the uh, CHAOPS or whatever program, then when they are supplying a certain proposal, then it is not really about it, is it really cheap or, or cheaper than the other, but what is included in the price? That is what is considered, and that is what should be built up. And as I mentioned in the start of my speech, it is a very hard positioning because we are a small country, we have to be specialized, we have only small companies for, for a very long time, and we have to produce something which should be good at the start immediately, because otherwise we don't get projects. But it is a very hard position. It is not the same, going back to that question, Miklos, not the same position as in the mass production like the automobile industry. But it, 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 when we speak about economic terms, it is very specialized industry, and that is very important. The state uh, should have a supporting or governing role. My last uh, mentioning to that, that how the other countries are solving this, because not, or Hungary is not only the, not the only country which is small and have only SMEs, we have countries like that in Belgium or even countries like Luxembourg and, and places like that. I can give you the Luxembourg example. I can give it because it will be never used in Hungary, but Luxembourg is connected to the space industry on finance. It means that they are doing a lot of financing for the big players in the world because of the, because of the Luxembourg bank system and taxation is supporting that possibility. So that's how they are connected to that. Or for the Belgians, we are participating in a lot of programs, which is a kind of pit, a, a middle product, which is never big, never small. And we, we have a, a working very much in, in networking, or we have some similarities in, in Italy, but Italy is also a big player. But even in Italy, they have a kind of a, a cooperation between the companies who are just working on very small parts. I know Italian companies who specialize themselves on coating. Coating, I mean, there are laymen here. It means that covering the different space parts which are on the space. And it may happen that they have to work on 150 uh, Fahrenheit, uh, 150 Celsius minus, or the opposite, several hundred uh, Celsius on, on, on hot heat, when the sun is shining on the, on the space part. And it, it requires a special coating on different appliances of the, of the space missions to 
we stand these these special uh, uh, weather circumstances. I can speak, speak about weather. But it needs a very special coating. And there are Italian companies, only two or three, who are specialized on that. For they are doing it since the 1950s of the last centuries, doing like that. And we are seeing two or three companies uh, overlapping each other, and no one can compete with them. They are the best on them. But I can assume that you will never ask them to, to paint your flat with that coating. It is so expensive. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I say. So that's what we should find in Ireland, because there, there are these options, and these so called small players have to specialize very much on that. And once they could specialize themselves and find the market segment, then I can say that they can really find their, uh, their business idea behind that and also including profit. This is what is called the old space. Yeah, I'll give it, but uh, that was the question, the traditional space, I, I want to yes. listen to that. Yeah. And, 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 it, and it is very important to have this, this basis to, 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 to have enough uh, workforce to learn somewhere. And these, these businesses can be very uh, stable, stationary, providing uh, uh, a, a, a solid, solid income for the companies and, and for the employees and for the owners. But they will never, never boost up. They are not uh, an exponential uh, 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 opportunity for anyone. Uh, these are the small startups which are providing services for end users, I think. And this is where, where the uh, huge opportunities for the future are lying for anybody in the space industry, just like it was for anybody in the online industry. And this is a kind of metric, I think, also used in the new space that, okay, you are doing something, I, I don't know, or maybe I don't understand what you are doing, but how many users you have? You know, this is the, the number, you know, the, 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 this is some hope, you know, how the new services or new company is graded. And if you are able to collect a lot of users, a lot of, you know, participants, you, you have, you know, their email, their contact, contact data, this is a value, whatever service you have behind that. And in the new space, maybe you can attract a lot of people for for one of uh, interesting application, right? Okay, thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, I just look at the time now, and because we want to uh, finish uh, before six, let me now open the floor for the audience to ask questions. So does any one of you have a question you're willing to ask now? Please just open your camera and we're listening. Okay, no comments or questions. So Okay, we still have some time. So if you if you think you can also write in the chat. Now, while we are waiting for these questions, let me go back to uh, new space and uh, space travel or space tourism, which is uh, which attracts the attention of of many people who are not really involved but uh, uh, are interested to the field. So if I if I give the word word back to Caro, is it really uh, an opportunity for everyone? I, I don't mean financially because obviously not. But other than financials, uh, can anyone go, or we should have a stable, uh, very strong health conditions and very strong mental conditions, or or what is it like from a psychological point of view to? Uh, to uh, to do this, uh, is it really a potential uh, opportunity for business for many people involved in the future? Well, a lot of people believe that this is going to be a major industry in the future. Um, maybe it's a little bit early. Uh, we have to see uh, if we make it until there and uh, we don't run out of steam before we actually uh, uh, get to involve all those players. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit worried, to be honest, in terms of running out of steam. Um, 
because there's a lot of lack of transparency in the field. Um, I'm not sure if startups and innovators are being funded and supported on the way they actually benefit. But let's see if some of the giants pull out until uh, um, this may, this actually happens. And um, I always get surprised. I'm, I'm sometimes I get invited to random events uh, uh, from uh, colleagues all around the world. And a couple of weeks ago, or maybe a month uh, ago, I was uh, dragged into a room uh, of the uh, CEO of uh, Orbit uh, and. Uh, they managed to get uh, a dozen bottle of wines on board of the ISS to run research on wine. And uh, you've got to know that the wine is actually legal in, uh, in, in on board of the ISS. And um, but because they're already preparing for space tourism, they were able to get through uh, the study. So, um, um, you know, you can clearly see there there is um an interest in that and um there is some openness for that uh, in terms of our capacity to to go out to space um i'm not a, a physician myself i i would not like to to, to state things that i uh i'm not qualified about but there there are in in psychology as well as in in physical condition there seems to be a number of uh, uh, sort of clear cut uh, go or no goals, and uh, we got to be in a, in a sufficient amount uh, in a sufficient uh, health uh, state in terms of heart, uh, uh, lung, and and, and other uh, uh, conditions that uh, we need to be able to um, so that we can be launched and and return safely, but as well as it. From a psychological, yes. a psychological point of view, could the average person go or no, 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 it's just for minority uh, from a psychological point of view? I think we can find, I believe we can find ways and means to train people and prepare even average people who are not suffering of, um, I mean, you got to know that at some point in life about uh, it's really unknown yet, but uh, mental health professionals believe that people, 70% uh, of people uh, at least need some sort of uh, mental health condition during their lifetime. Um, but we can teach people to cope with difficulties and we shouldn't look at mental illness as a, a definite reason of, of not being able to do something, but rather going out to space or, um, I don't know, doing sports or whatever, uh, working, um, going out. Uh, a lot of people will be scared to go out on the street now, and a lot of people will have very specific compulsive disorders washing their hands over and over again now. Um, you know, we got to tell people that they, they're actually capable of, of, of going out, live, uh, live a meaningful life. Uh, and if space is part of that, I think, you know, people trying to pursue meaning uh, is, is one of the major drivers of uh, mental health and to, to being able to focus in the present moment and to find uh, 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 the connection between your present moment and, you know, sort of understand your context and where you want to get at uh, to, to sort of live that meaning that you want to experience in your life. So I believe, you know, meaning can put things into a very different, your, your subjective hope for what you want to live can put things into a very different perspective um, if you want to achieve it. So yes, I think most of us will be able to make it if they truly want to. Thank you. That's a lot more positive than I expected. <laughs> <laughs> okay. add something to that, that. At this moment, the, the travel to space or space tourism is a luxury product. We can know about the prices, and the luxury product has that special life cycle. It means when you have a luxury product like a watch or a car or something like that, then you feel that you are selected from the others, not the average people. So that it is not a good question if average people can travel to the space. Yeah, of course, they can travel, as Kyle mentioned, there is a train for it and they can travel. But travel to the space is something that luxury product. It means that they know that. Uh, Charles Simony was traveling to space, and he was an average people, 
from the Hungary to Netherlands. People could travel a second space person from Hungary. So it is very important to say that the luxury product, if you have really, I don't know what is the price of the ticket, but they are already starting to sell tickets to that or trying to collect customers. It means that it can be a, a product which can be sold to these special people who can pay for that. And also it depends on how much it is fashionable because it can be put into fashion and then there will be a long queue for that to do that. I think for the basic fashion for the space industry, technically it is viable and possible to let people travel to the space. There is no problem with that. It costs a lot of money and even average people can do that. But it needs a lot of money, so it is a luxurious product and it should be built up as a market for a luxurious product. There is no problem for that. It depends on how much fashionability they will to put into. That's my view on that, agreeing mostly what Carly thought. All right, yes, 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 yes. We know it's a luxury one. It's good to know that from a psychological point of view, it's doable. Now, uh, if there's no question from the audience, let me check. I think somebody, uh, yeah, a question here. When will it be re the reality, uh, the mining of an asteroid? Is it coming be becoming real in our life? This is a question from the audience. So. When do you think it will be reality mining of an asteroid? I'm not sure which one of you uh, could answer that question. I just give one answer that maybe it sounds very uh, optimistic, but it is already planned by the Chinese space agency. So it is not something which is not existing as a plan. I don't know what is the date for that, but it is on their agenda. Yeah, I think so that this has already happened. So from the moon, we already, you know, bring back <laughs> a, a lot of material to the to the earth, but for the scientific reason. But I think uh, mining on an asteroid is definitely a different mission due to the distance and, you know, travel travel to there. But mining on the moon, and I think this is more more realistic in the in the near future. I think this 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 is a couple of decades. So so currently, one of the mission of the European Space Agency uh, regarding this uh, moon station project is especially a module, which will a cargo module between the surface of the moon and the moon station. So in this cargo module, there already can move, you know, a lot of cargo and, and definitely not only to the moon, but from the moon, back uh, something from uh, from there. So I think this is one of the aspect and one of the new area. And I think this is even more hot than the luxury, you know, the the travel space travel. But the space mining and you know mining different materials somewhere else and a kind of you know exoplanet mining, and uh, based on the robotic. Uh, technology and autonomous technology I think this is this is the key factor that how fast it will go what will be the price to build an equipment which will be you know sent to the surface of the moon or, or other object and automatically mining and sending back some some ending on on on, on there and I, I think this is also very reliable in 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 the context of Mars and you know other other planets so I am very optimistic that this will be a very very strong progress in the near uh, foreseeing decades All right so thank you very much gentlemen I think we will close our session. But um, I give the word to each one of you to say a few final words if you want to before we say goodbye. So in the order of appearance, Peter, uh, could you be the first one, please? Yeah, I, I just uh, thank you very much for the possibility. It was very challenging for me to, to tell these things about. I was very happy to participate, and I hope not much reaction from, from the audience, but I hope that to give and very little knowledge about the space and the area of space possibilities. That's all. I thank you again for the possibility. Thank you. Thank you for you, Peter. Istvan, please. 
So thank you for the opportunity. I think I think uh, one of the most important uh, ideas I wanted to share is that we need traditional space actors in Hungary and new space actors as well. And for traditional space actors, we need, uh, of course, government help and uh, and uh, to build up those deep uh, knowledges in certain specific uh, uh, domains where we can be the best of something. But also for the new space actors, we need people with business ideas who who can uh, uh, put down or draw a business plan to get funded and to start. Thank you. Well, I'm glad to hear as a, an associate professor at Corvinus with a lot of students uh, watching us now. We can like call for business for them. <laughs> in the future. So thank you, Istvan. Excellent, please. Again, thank you very much for uh, this opportunity to talk to here with my friends and you know such a large audience. I uh, really like to encourage all of you who has some influence on the government strategy or you know is is uh, supporting the space business and as Istvan, Istvan mentioned, uh, open more opportunities for the new space players, you know, more funding or uh, more uh, different financial construction. What I am uh, really miss a little bit in this government action is uh, transparency. So somehow what, what is going on currently, this is a little bit, you know, below uh, my expectation and, and lack of transparency is 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 uh, somehow the nature of, of the current government actions. So we don't know what, what will happen, just something will appear. And most probably this already had two years history, but nobody was aware of or very small amount of people aware of what, what is what is going on. But I think definitely the, the space industry is, is one of the uh, chance in in the in the new competition between the countries and and the industries and and we should care about that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Karol. I'm actually really glad that Bertalan has mentioned that. I really think the lack of transparency in uh, in the country is one of the major holdbacks at the moment. Um, I hope to. I hope that this will change soon. Um, security and safety transparency these are some of the fundamental needs so people can learn and when you build a company you are people you need to see if you can meet your own expectations is the only meaningful way to learn um, and as we are a young uh, generation of um, space entrepreneurs uh, i i hope we can uh, uh, find find our directions and I believe the government has huge responsibility and uh, they have actually uh, the chances uh, to support us in that. So I hope it will happen. Um, I'm looking forward to it um, and I would like to thank everyone who invited us here today. Thank you very much gentlemen for, for sharing your knowledge and ideas with us. You convinced me that this is a, a topic that uh, deserves more attention uh, also from our side, the Hungarian Economic Association, especially the section of industry and entrepreneurship. So there will be a lot to discuss later on as these enterprises will develop over time. And also, as you mentioned, the uh, cooperation between government and business uh, from that point of view, that's also um, an area which uh, we will uh, revisit time and again. So thank you all for uh, this event and um, keep in touch. See you next time. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you for everybody.